Yo, what's up, people? It's me, Johnny Lightning Thunderbolt, and today I'm gonna check out some sick inter. Just stay on the. And today I'm gonna check out some sick interviews from your from from some of your favorite bands like Slipknot and. All right, we'll just keep the glasses off then, I guess. Fuck it. Except these interviews go wrong. This either ends up with the bands leaving the interview, or the bands getting in fights with the interviewers, or just being extremely awkward. So let's dive right in and see how these bands react to some horrible interviews. The first band we have up is Slipknot. Who would, who would win in a fight, you or Ronald McDonald? You know, man, I don't know what to talk to you about, to be honest. You don't think we have anything in common? Uh, I'm pretty sure we don't have anything in common. Well, I'm a I'm a heavy metal rocker. Are you? Yeah. If you if I if there was a heavy metal song about me, what would it be called? Jackass. <laughs> What's that? Jackass. Jackass would be my song. Let me have a couple lyrics. You're a jackass. Jesus Christ. He kind of got buried by Clown over there, man. Clown got to take it easy on that guy. I mean, I don't think that guy knew what he was getting into. Dude, Slipknot looked fucking sick in this interview. Like, I miss the times when we had Slipknot at, like, big award shows and That doesn't really happen anymore. I don't know what really set him off to really have that vibe with the interviewer. But either way, it was funny, so therefore Clown is in the right. This next one is of the one and only Machine Gun Kelly, probably one of the most controversial people. Now I don't want to talk about this. I, I, you know, I, I, dude, I've done this so many times, dude. Can we just, I don't want to do an interview, man. Can, hey. can we just, do, like, I don't... MGK. Like, I want to let my music speak for me. I don't have shit to say. I've been saying listen. shit for years, dude. Like, man, y'all don't listen. Like, I, listen to my fucking songs. MGK. Bro, I love you. Listen, you know I, love you. I love you. I'm just, I'm not can I tell you something? Yeah. Listen. That's what I'm talking to. Listen, we're so excited for your music. Love. I mean, I can kind of see where he's coming from, but he also should have just probably finished the interview. He was probably in a bad mood, obviously, and maybe just burnt out on things, so I get it. Um, it wasn't the worst interview. That's just my opinion on it. This next one is Howard Stern interviewing the band Kiss. And since it's Howard Stern, you know he's going to say some fucked up shit that's going to make everyone uncomfortable. Your drummer died, correct? At a young age. Yeah, he, he passed away about a year and a half ago to, uh, because of cancer. Word got back to you that I made fun of your drummer, true? It's true. At an emotional point, and you called up off the air and said that you called my producer, Gary Delabate, and you said, I am going to publicly beat Howard Well, Stern. first I asked to talk to you because I didn't think flunkies, producers, or other sorts should stand in the way with between two people who had something to say to each other. And I said, perhaps you could relay a, a message to Howard that... Uh, the next time I see him, I was gonna beat the piss out of you. I mean, that sounds pretty fair if you make fun of somebody's, like, friend that literally just died. I mean, that's pretty understandable to want to beat the shit out of them. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Gene Simmons actually beat the shit out of Howard Stern. I'm a fan of the Howard Stern show, you know? But I do understand that Howard Stern is kind of an asshole. And I also understand that Gene Simmons can also be kind of an asshole as well. But in this situation, I would definitely say Howard Stern was definitely the asshole. This next one is of Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. Isn't this the most interesting thing about about your position in life that you get people you don't even know coming up to you asking you to say whenever I'm in town I always listen to such and such radio station or I always watch such and such TV show and you've never they got goddamn cartoons playing no does, does that bug you all right Later. sheesh dude he just lost him he just fucking was out Kirk Cobain was done dude I don't really blame him that's a very Kirk Cobain thing to do just be done with it and be like I <laughs> he didn't even say I. He's just out. This is Brian May, the guitar player of Queen. Yeah, I would not be doing this out of choice. I just don't want to disappoint you guys, that's all. I mean, really, I need to sleep. <clears throat> okay. Listen, do you want to do an interview about the show or what we're doing? Because this is really wasting time. Okay. You know, I'm sorry to be difficult, but, you know, we're all trying to do as much as we can here. Mm -hmm. You sure you want to do this? Okay, let, me, let me just ask, uh, to, to be I mean, honest to you, your, your manager also told me this, but I'm very much up front. Listen, we have like three minutes left. If okay. you want to do an interview, do an interview, but okay. I don't want to be watching bits of tape. It's ridiculous. Look, I'm sorry. It doesn't work. Ooh. Sorry, guy. Tell you that. Come on. I'll, I'll see you. Sorry. Uh. He was not feeling it. That's hard, though. I feel like almost because he was nice, it almost hurts more. You know what I mean? When he's like, no, 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 I'm done. Like, I can't do this. Of course, we have to have Brian Stars with the Venge Sevenfold. Well, do you know what, um, what's the meaning of your music and, and all that stuff? Um, each song means something different, and uh, we have no really uh, huge meaning or self-defining sort of thing. 
we're just kind of living our life and doing that kind of thing. I think we just lost one of our interviews. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, well, to be fair, Brian uh, asking that question was asked. So, like, um, what does your music mean? Like, you make music. Like, does it have what? Are, what is like words? And the motherfucker just walks away. It's like, okay, it's kind of understandable. This one's Nardward talking to Slipknot. I'm down with OPP, you know. Me. Yeah, you know, you're down with it, number three. Is it a band called that? Well, you know, Naughty by... Nature. Naughty by Nature, number three is rocking now. What do you want, man? Naughty by Nature. There is a tribute band. Where's number three going? No. No, we can't leave right now. Number three. Number three. Not Nardwar. Number three has definitely left the building. I don't understand why number three left because he seemed like they were vibing. I don't understand. Nardwar did not deserve that. He's a freaking OG. This is Travis Barker and this is the band The Transplants. I've never even heard of this band. I'm going to be quite honest with you, but apparently Travis Barker's part of it. Uh, stuff you do for fun. Are you doing anything weird? Uh, I wake up, go to breakfast, go to a gym. Come go on. To, like, I swear, I do it every morning. Nothing, nothing um, weird. I'm not going to tell you any you negative shit I do. No, Are you be crazy? negative. I mean, you dress like a monkey and swing from stuff, do you? God, no. What are you talking about? Why would he dress like a monkey, Holmes, and swing from anything? I don't know. Why would he? Man, you're a idiot. Oh, man, don't be a dick. Get the I'm my sorry, bus, they just kind of sprung it off my bus. Take off. Idiot. I can't tell if that's like staged or not, because that almost feels like the time when MTV was like staging a hella shit, like shit on TV. But like, I don't know. That guy's questions were fucking weird for sure. That was cringe. This next one is Prince on the View. Thank you. Don't understand, Prince. I have wanted to make love to you for my whole life. I'm sorry. You're scared. Bro. He has no idea where the f to go. I would say when you first meet somebody, probably don't tell them that you've wanted to bane them. Probably not the best way to go about things. Mm. The Bee Gees on Clive Anderson. Okay. Don't need those other two. I can knock out something like <laughs> well, that. There's a lot of ego problems at the time, yeah. and um, I, don't, I can't even remember well, we why. One at the same time called Don't Forget to Remember, which was a. Yeah. I've, I've forgotten that one. But okay. yeah, <laughs> we've got your mic. Yeah, of course. We're getting yeah. on like a storm, aren't we, Clive? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but uh, well, uh, yeah. we are a toss up, pal. <laughs> I don't. Hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. oh, dude, his face when he realizes that they're actually leaving, bro. That's f why do they do that though? Like, because he didn't know one of their songs. Like, that's kind of crazy. I love the Bee Gees, but I guess I better join them. <laughs> oh, well, man. You can stay in, uh, just well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. <laughs> I don't even know what the f he really did. He didn't know one of their songs, I guess, but it. That wasn't even like a huge hit from my knowledge. Courtney Love makes Madonna walk out. I've seen this one. This is painful. Anything Courtney Love used to do is probably a uh, hot mess. I went, to the, I went to Truth or Dare with Kurt and we were leaving. He goes, that's you. When we were first going out. Really? Yeah, I think it was the line where Warren says, well, what doesn't belong on camera, right? Okay. Madonna's like, running off. She's going to be going. Thank you very much. No, it's not. Courtney Love is no, 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 extremely no, 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 wasted. No, no. Well, it's all ended well. I. Courtney Love doing what she does, where she makes people uncomfortable and then they leave. Uh, classic. Yeah, that was pretty cringe. This is one of the most infamous interviews of all time, uh, at least in the alternative scene. Never shout never. Brian stars interview number two. What a train wreck. So, uh, new album. How would you describe it? New album, Rockabilly. The vibes uh, are not vibing. How is it going to be different from all the other bands out there? More like a little more elv elvish, 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 elvish. Like elvish, like elvish. Uh, dark elves <laughs> and wood elves. <laughs> Damn. Elvish. So awkward. <laughs> Very elvish. Yeah. Lord of the Rings ish. It's so tense. Holy yeah, shit. I mean, let's just wrap it up, man. I'm just being real with you, bro. I love you to death. I appreciate what you do. But you know, from now on, ah, dude, you guys see Brian's face where he goes, uh huh. Death, I appreciate what you do, but you know, from now on, <laughs> he, he knows he's, he's full of. That's that, hilarious. Dude, this is not the mindset we want to be interviewed in. We want somebody who's gonna, you know, dig the truth out of us and not dig a bunch of bullshit out. You know, because we're here to laugh and have fun. You know, but at the same time, 
you know, we want to we want to be taken seriously for our art, man, because we put our passions into it. And I realize you put your passion in your art too, man. But make it more about the art and less about the scum. And that's it. Love you guys, you fans. This is for you, not for this guy. Dude, that's awful, bro. That is so dirty. The whole fucking interview is like that too. That might be the worst interview of all time. This is Ted Nugget. I've never even heard of this mother. Let's hear what he has to say. Call me when you sit down across from someone who has more families with dying little boys and girls who get a call to take them on their last fishing trip in life. What? Call me when you meet someone who does that more than I do. I'm an extremely loving, passionate man, and people who investigate me honestly without the baggage of political correctness ascertain the conclusion that I'm a damn nice guy, and if you can find a screening process more powerful than that, I'll uh how's that sound i don't know what led that guy to be like that but that is a fucking disaster bro somebody's got some anger problems there this is of system of a down let's see how awkward this one is about three years since your last record came out um is that part of the reason why this is a double album or did you just come out with so much material that it had to be split up wow look at that camera fellatio that's good stuff <laughs> okay um what did you guys do during your downtime? Were you just writing all the time, or are there any other projects you I work my dog, Felicio. What is the process of you guys deciding what, you know, what songs go go on the record or not? Superman told me that we needed to make a double type of record. Damn. And so I answered and I said, "Okay, Superman, we will make a double type of record, but it won't be a double album because Batman didn't want." <laughs> This guy's just full of jokes. Together an interview that, you know, doesn't come off to kids like you guys are arrogant or whatever, which is but what it kind of comes off. We are. We're very arrogant. Tell the kids we're very arrogant. I just told them we are very arrogant, and you should be. I think System of a Down just we're being silly. If that's like your one time to interview them or something, that kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Because it's not like every day somebody gets to interview a huge band like that, and then they're just treating it like a joke the whole time and not trying to answer questions that's, that's kind of like disrespectful you know what i mean it's a little upsetting i'm sure this one is henry rollins i'm pretty sure this is like a punk artist so we'll see how that goes so i'm not in the know you know what i mean man yeah i don't read that maximum rock and roll i don't read that flip side i don't watch that tv set you ever get the feeling that la is dead not deader than any other place. That's Not true. Deader than some people's minds. Yo, that's mean. That's mean. Okay, boy, wrap it up. I'm cold, I'm wet, and I'm busy selling out, so I gotta get backstage to my women and my cocaine. So what else do you want to know? I mean, that's really punk of him, you know? Cocaine, women, selling out. I mean, the selling out part, I guess, is the complete opposite of punk, but... You know, yeah, cocaine and women. <laughs> this next one is of Tommy Lee from Motley Crue. So you know it's probably gonna be really crude. Nicky was here alone last time. I don't know why I didn't bring the other three of you, was, but he's here I alone. I was sad, I was missing them. Hey, Greta. <laughs> yes. Uh, what color panties are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, gentlemen. That's so oh, weird, nice bro. See you. Nikki, see if you can't bring some other friends next time. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mom. She got him. Did I get that that's like Tommy Lee's character and shit, and he was probably on drugs like crazy during that time, but that is so gross. This one is of the band Kiss. Yeah. Kiss is K-I-S-S. -S. This does not spell Kiss. Gustavo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, big honestly, I picked this t-shirt specially to do the interview with you guys. I mean, it's not cool to wear a KISS t-shirt doing let's, a let's KISS interview. One second. It's oh, very good. Keep us up. We got a KISS t-shirt uh, in our... Oh. One. Okay. Dude, they look yeah. sick. He, he told me it would be no problem. How about an interview and we wear KISS t-shirts? Is that I mean, okay? That'd be cool. No, you don't understand. But I love a t-shirt. Yeah, you don't understand. Damn, they're grilling them. I, I do. Do you guys want every journalist wearing KISS t-shirts while yeah, doing KISS interviews? Yeah, I don't want them wearing other t-shirts. <laughs> put your arms through the t-shirt. Put the t-shirt on backwards. You don't have to take it off. I'll do that. I mean, no, okay. You don't we'll help you. Damn, bro. We took that band out on their first tour. You took them out on their first tour? Why are you grilling them so hard then, bro? Like, what the f***? Unless if you really hate them, I don't understand. Even if you did, though, like grown adults but i guess this is being a rock star you talk shit about other bands and stuff to get attention i know yeah. and acdc and everybody else 
You, you look so much better. better. Much better. Okay. I'm sure Kiss was mostly like joking around in that, but they definitely busted the guy's balls a little too hard on that. I don't know. It's kind of mean. I didn't think most of those interviews were that bad. I'm going to be quite honest. In my opinion, though, the Never Shout Never interview, definitely the top worst interview I've ever seen in my life. It's like, I think an hour long. Oh my fucking God. And none of the other ones really were close to that, to be quite honest, besides maybe like Tommy Lee being a creep, but... You know, that's just Tommy Lee. What, what do you expect? Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video, though. Be sure to hit the like button. And also, you can check out my merch at johnnygilbert.com. I also have jewelry at nevertakeitoff.com. And you can check out all my social media. It's linked down below. I will see you in the next video. Stay up in our cover. Let's be sure and quit. And peace out, thug pugs. Bye.